your windows come in designer colors that folks just can't get anywhere else. Yes, in fact, we have eight gorgeous exterior colors, including sandstone and dark bronze. We also have six interior colors as well. Black is also really popular, both inside and out. And whether you choose a color window or a white window, you have seven different window styles to choose from to help transform your home's look. And what's great about your color windows is that they won't fade over time. Well, some window companies paint a white window and try to pass it off as a color, but through the seasons, it will chip and are under warranty to maintain their color. Michael, your windows are also custom built. What are the benefits of that? Well, our windows are manufactured to precisely fit your specific window openings, which helps provide maximum energy efficiency. Being custom built also means if you have any beautiful trim that you'd like to keep, we can install your windows without impacting that trim. A lot of homeowners think that a project like this will create a huge mess in their home. Well, our master installers seal off the work area, cover your furniture, and lay down drop cloths our crews are very particular about their work and keeping your home clean. They'll even vacuum everything when they're done. That is great information, Michael. Thank you. It's Renewal by Anderson's 31-day sale. Before March 31st, buy one window, patio door, or entry door and get the next one 40% off. Plus, save an extra $100 on every window and door you buy. With zero money down, zero monthly payments, and zero interest for one year. Our 31-day sale ends March 31st. For a free appointment, call 1-800-504-4545. In Jerome's Outdoor Department, you get Jerry's price. And for a limited time, we pay your sales tax. Plus, no money down, 36 months, no interest financing. Our solid weather-resistant hardwood Maldives sofa, Jerry's price, $9.98. Now at Jerome's. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. We're working some breaking news. At least two people shot at a high school near Denver, Colorado. Police are on the hunt for the shooter. We will bring you the very latest just ahead. Day two of the LAUSD strike and no agreement in sight, leaving hundreds of thousands of students out of their classroom for a second day in a row. Coming up, you're going to hear from some of these protesters. What they say is that that's next. Good morning, I'm Carlos Herrera. Pothole nightmare on the 71 freeway yet again. We're in Pomona this morning. You can see part of the repair process now underway. But fixing all of this, well, that's going to take some time. We're live. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes. This latest atmospheric river nearly produced a tornado where people got a rare take cover emergency alert last night. Good morning, I'm Sam Rubin. New here at 10 o'clock, the notorious Hollywood madam Heidi Fleist. Could there be a TV show in the works about her life? I think there is. And Post Malone avoids a trial over arguably his biggest hit song, Why Did He Settle? We'll talk about it coming up. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Kirk Hawkins filling in for Mark Kriske this morning. Another stormy day across Southern California. In fact, outside our studios just a little while ago, uh, it was still raining this morning. A live look at your Max Doppler. You can see some heavy downpours working their way from Santa, Santa Paula, Oxnard, other parts of Ventura County. Agora Hills appears to be in the path. Pomona seeing some rain. Temecula as well. And of course, some of those snow levels have dropped in the foothill, lo in some foothill locations as well. Claremont now, Glendora, Rancho Cucamonga, just to name a few. A look at your zone forecast for today. We'll see a high of 57 along the coast. Again, high surf advisory conditions continuing today 58 downtown LA 57 in the San Fernando Valley as you can see we're uh, expecting some gusty winds continuing from Orange County the Inland Empire and of course the high desert where the high today 51 degrees well that is the latest on your forecast for now Jess back to you Breaking news this morning, there has been a shooting at a Denver area high school this morning. Denver PD says two adults have been wounded at East High School in the downtown area. The two victims have been transported to local hospitals. Right now, it is unclear if the shooting happened on or off campus. Police say the suspect is no longer at the scene and the school has been placed on lockdown. We'll continue to follow that. 
Here in Southern California in LA, LAUSD essential workers are rallying this morning on the second day of a three day strike. There's been no deal on a new contract. KTLA's Annie Rose Ramos live in Lincoln Heights with more on that. Annie Rose, good morning. Frank, good morning. No deal and no agreement in sight. We've moved over to one of the district offices here for LAUSD. I'm standing here with Lorraine because you are a teacher standing in solidarity, striking in solidarity with some of these workers. Why are you here? We are here standing in solidarity because respect matters. So this strike is about unfair practice charges filed on LAUSD. And so we do not stand for unfair practice charges. We are about respecting the workers. So we're here in solidarity because we are also union members. And so we demand respect. And if their labor rights have been violated, then that means we all have been violated because the injury to one is an injury to all. Thank you so much, Lorraine. We know that this strike is gonna keep going. It's gonna go until tomorrow, leaving over, over 400,000 students out of the classroom for a second day in the row. Now I wanna bring in mother and daughter. Tell me your name. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Natalie. Natalie. Natalie is in high school. She is not going to work right now. You are working for the LAUSD, so you are on strike. Tell me more about your story. Um, I'm a healthcare assistant with LAUSD. We need smaller class sizes. We need to, we're here fighting for these kids. It's not just about the pay raise, it's about these kids. You know, a lot of people say this is not fair to the parents, it's not fair to the students who are out of school for two days, likely gonna be three days. You're a parent, your yeah. daughter is out of school for her senior year for two days. What do you what do you say to the parents who say this is not fair to the students? It, it isn't fair to the students. It, it's it's the greed that is keeping these kids out of the classroom, not us. We're fighting for the kids. This is what we are doing here. They need to be in the classroom and they need to have everything that they need. They need the proper funding, they need supplies, they need accessible restrooms. This is the things that they need in school. Thank you so much. All right, you see here everybody protesting. This is going to go on until Thursday, but again, no agreement in sight, no planned meetings between the district and the union set for today, so we'll see what happens come today and tomorrow. All of these workers you see here, they're going to be going back to work on Friday, but they say that doesn't mean that they may not strike again if they cannot reach an agreement. Reporting live, I'll send it back to you both in the studio. Okay, Andy Rose, we appreciate that. This morning, LAPD Chief Michael Moore has asked the city's inspector general to investigate how photos of undercover officers were released as part of a public records request. Civil rights group Stop LAPD Spying Coalition posted the names and photos of more than 9,200 LAPD officers last Friday. Some of those officers were, quote, sensitive assignments. It's unclear how many of them have had their covers blown as a rele result of the release. The group obtained the information legally as part of a request under the California Public Records Act. Police Union has filed a formal complaint and is calling for Constitutional Policing Director Liz Rhodes to be fired. Crews working to patch up potholes along the 71 freeway in Pomona are making progress. The CHP has just reopened one lane on the northbound side of the freeway. The southbound lanes remain shut down. KTLA's Carlos Herrera live in Pomona with the latest updates. Carlos, good morning. Hey, good morning. CHP reopened that one lane about 15 minutes ago, and that's definitely helping the traffic back up in this area. You can see traffic squeezing on through this one lane. Now, Caltrans crews, they're still here focusing and working on this stretch of the 71 freeway. On the northbound side, they filled several potholes like this one you see here, but repairing all of them, well, that's going to take several hours. 